and Pierrotta's gem. In and the light now turned on. First of 10, 1200, and they're all in. Racing, missing the start was cutting edge away well. Mashani Aloha, it's in front from Valorous Perform up to second, third as head honcho. Fourth the outside, Mashani Express and further back to under the shadow. Cutting edge is now second last passing Pirata's Gem, a length and a half further back. So Mashani Aloha is in front by a neat length here, second's Valorous Performer. Uh, Keen third as head honcho, further back to Mashani Express over on the outside of cutting edge. A long way back there is under the shadow and Pirata's Gem's a length and a half away. Mashani Aloha's in front by a long neck and second. Valorous Performer a length and a half away. Third is Head Honcho. Fourth the outside is Mashani Express and further back to Cutting Edge on the inside of Under the Shadow and Pirata's Gem is last of all at the 450. It's Mashani Aloha just in front. Second Valorous Performer coming through as Head Honcho. One away from the rail. Wide route is Mashani Express and further back to Cutting Edge at the 250. In front Mashani Aloha. Valorous Performer's gone. Uh, Head Honcho runs home. Down the outside is Mashani Express and further back to Pirata's Gem. In front there was Mashani Aloha by a length trying hard as Head Honcho. In front by Mashani Aloha and Mashani Aloha's one from Head Honcho. Mashani Express and Valorous Performer followed by Pirata's Gem out of the shadow and the last one was Cutting Edges pulled up at the tail. Yeah, Mr Cutis joins us now. Well done Les. Thanks Bernadette. Yeah. She's tough, this little lady, isn't she? Yeah, well, I actually thought the third horse would run over the top. I was hoping it would run over the top of the day, but um, just to get a different one winning. But it was uh, pleasantly surprised at the, the shorter price one won. Yeah, and she just gets out in front and she gives her best. Yeah, yeah, she goes good. Thank goodness that Clinton didn't knock us off this week, otherwise we'd have every bush horse in Australia coming down here next week. <laughs> we would indeed. It must be tricky lining all these horses up uh, um, each week. No, not really, Ben. I just put them in and let them do do whatever they can do. It made the best one win, but it's just nice to win a race, and uh, it's even better in town. It is indeed. And and how many millions runners are you looking at at the moment? We're trying to get five in there. Uh, the this one and uh, the filly that won last last week here, or the week before, sorry. And then uh, we've got three debut horses. We've got to, we've got to qualify them for the trials, but hopefully we can do that. Okay. And uh, Kobayashi's been. Uh, a marvellous stallion for, for Mike Crook so far to date. Yeah, I, I wish we'd have a lot more of them. We've got plenty of them. I think, uh, I think there's 16 there ne the next year, so it'll be nice. Yeah. How much is Kobayashi a service? I believe 13 and a half, but... Uh, it's a bargain. I'm, I'm only believing that, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a bargain, and you've won so many races with them. So you're going to have 16 Kobayashis next year? Hopefully that's the plan. Wow. I, I think that the year after, sorry, at the barn in this year. All right. Well, you're doing a great job, Les. Enjoy. Thanks, Bernadette. Yeah, the yeah. well done, Ben. Yeah, Ben, she's a lovely filly. Um, it was basically just a repeat of what she'd done here a few weeks ago. But she was actually better, though, late once she come under pressure. Obviously more familiar with leading and and with the course and trip. Her second, only her third start and second time here. She, um, she travelled so nice. She jumped away super. I didn't have to do much work from barrier one. Um, obviously, the eventual... The horse of Clinton Taylor's come across the sit outside of me, but she was unfazed by it. Um, really, I just laid on her neck and she was happy. Uh, gave a good kick, and she, one thing she is, she does show, and a lot of the Kobayashi's do, is when they, they're challenged, they're up for the fight, they're very competitive, and um, they're just a great breed. So, um, another great result for Les Ross, Mike Crooks, and, and Aquas with Kobayashi. And I feel as though she is enjoying the cut in the ground as well. Yeah, she is. She's. Um, She's pretty. She's pretty versatile. Like she's. Uh, she's. By far, I don't think it, she's near reached the ceiling yet. She's going to keep getting better. Uh, only time will tell how good those that she's beaten are and how good she is. But um, she's a professional. As you've seen as she come in, it's a very warm, warm afternoon, and um, she could probably go around again just a bit. So she's uh, a lovely filly. Well done. Thanks, Bernie. And red light now turned on for the Eagle Way. Felix has got the favourite in an open market. They're all in. Right to run. Racing now.
And away well, shy guy. Likewise, Hussey Empress and Handy is more trouble with Encoder. Felix of Scat drifting back as Winston Star. Likewise, Bilpa Maria the inside and wider at Red Defcon's under restraint going back to the tail. In front, shy guy by length and second as Hussey Empress and third as more trouble. Fourth, the outside three. Wide as Felix of Scat going forward. No luck early doors for him around Encoder. Winston Star's out three deep as well, followed by Bilpa Maria a length and a half to Red Defcon. So shy guy guys in front but sliding forward as Felix Saskat back to third the outside is Hussey Empress and more trouble fourth on the rail one further back to Encoder followed by Bilpa Maria on the inside of Winston Star and last of all is Red Defcon so in front shy guy by two lengths here second is Felix Saskat and third the outside is Hussey Empress out for 1200 a length and a half to more trouble on the inside of Encoder further back to Winston Star over on the outside of Bilpa Maria and two lengths away to Red Defcon in front of Shy Guy still by two. Seconds Hussey Empress at the thousand. And third is Felix Saskat. Two and a half to Encoder. A length and a half to More Trouble. And they're clear from Winston Star, Bilpa Maria. A length and a half to Red Defcon. About nine or ten lengths off Shy Guy at the 800 metres marker. In front by a length here. Seconds Hussey Empress. Third, the outsiders Encoder going forward around Felix Saskat. They're clear by three. From More Trouble on the inside going forward. Wider at Red Defcon. Uh, Winston Star shuffle back to second last. Last of all is Bilpa Maria. In front, Shy Guy by a length and second felt for is Hussey Empress. The inside, Felix Scat. Wide route is Encoder. Next, the inside is More Trouble. And Red Defcon comes to wide us after 325. In front, Shy Guy by length. Working home well is Felix Scat looming up. More Trouble runs to third and further back of the run to Hussey Empress struggling up the 175. Shy Guy's in front, trying hard as Felix Scat. Here comes More Trouble on the outside, running home strongly. More Trouble out wide range. Rangers up. More trouble grabbing the lead later. More troubles won again by Nectar Shy Guy Felix Saskat. Followed by Winston Star, Hussey Empress in Bilpa Maria, and then in Coda. And the last one was Red Def Con. And Jack Bruce joins us for a chat now. And I detect, you know, a little bit of the Kiwi flavour training these stayers came into effect here. Yeah, exactly right. And he had to be quite naturally tough to get it today. He hasn't had the quintessential build up to a 2000 metre run he had to do it on a wet track so he does have staying potential, we've always thought that I've probably been surprised at how quickly he's risen to this sort of level but uh, it was a good win by him and he had to be tough and sprinting at the end of 2000 I think is the main thing. A nice patient ride by Corey? Yeah exactly and I had sort of been very particular about that in all his runs, this preparation I wanted him ridden to enable him to get trips later on in his life and Corey's been able to do that and that's what paid dividends today, he was patient, didn't get involved in the muddling tempo, just let the horse relax and do the rest. Brilliant job, enjoy the win. Thank you very much. All right, let's have a chat now with winning jockey Corey Bayless. Firstly, an 11 out of 10, a great ride, really patient and nice to have a good horse underneath you. Yeah, definitely, it definitely helps to have the horse underneath you. Um, look, he's a really nice horse, I like him quite a lot. Um, he just goes to sleep for me throughout the running, which makes my job a thousand times easier. <laughs> You don't have to stress on him because you know he's going to let down for you. So, really happy with him. And Jack Bruce, obviously you do a lot of riding for him. He's such a great trainer. He definitely, he's definitely on his way up. And look, can't thank him enough for looking after me as well and giving me these rides. Yeah, indeed, well done. Yes, thank you. reacts well to the soft track. Here's Scott Power for the call. Away, there's the light. I am Fearless, the favourite. Stands well the inside. They're ready. Racing. The favourite began well. I am Fearless. Well, Mr Larrabee, he stood there, missed it by three or four lengths. Gossip Talk is showing speed along with Arwa Nietzsche. Also, Elusive Eagle from out wider on the track is going forward there, followed by Dollop and Unrestricted, who went back. Jack B. Lucky crossed over from Hallside Hammer, then Kalashnikov. On the inside, going back through the field was Ma Baby, then James Atelli. Cochran's out two and three wide there, followed by Fenar. Miss Hoff is a long way back in the field. It's well back. It's only got two behind it. Entrepreneurial's on the outside and three off to Mr Larrabee, who's back last. 
last of all the favourites clear as they settle down past the 500 it's I Am Fearless a length and a half in front of uh, Gossip Talk who's second there followed by Dollop into third uh, to the outside was Jack Be Lucky and Arwenichi is sneaking runs up along the inside unrestricted from a long way back and then Hallside Hammer and to the outside was Cochrane they come down past the 250 it's I Am Fearless a half length in front trying hard as Gossip Talk Arwenichi Dollop's on the outside and here's Mar Baby making ground towards the inside it's I Am Fearless out Mar Baby's finishing strongly got to the lead close to home and Mar Baby won the stampede I Am Fearless second third is Arwenichi and then Gossip Talk and Dollop unrestricted and Kalashnikov well back in the field was Jack Be Lucky and then came uh, on the outside Mr Larrabee well back in the field was Hallside Hammer and then came Miss Hoff Fenar well back in the field and then came Elusive Eagle Entrepreneurial Cochrane was well back also You've got to take your horses to the country and race them there. And that's just what you've done, Corey. Well done. Thanks so much, Bernie. Um, yeah, like, we put a lot of work into these horses. Um, we, we've obviously got a mixture of horses in our stable. We've got a lot of uh, loyal owners, and Murray Webster at Hopeton Farm. He's been great to us for a long time. And uh, get a win for him with this pretty special uh, good little horse. Um, we've had her since day one. Um, done a lot of work with her, and I was pretty wrapped when she got a run. I thought she was a good chance. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's a, it's very rewarding, and um, just want to say a big thanks to um, all our staff, um, the team at home. So much work goes into getting these horses qualified for these races, um, taking them to the country to the non-tabs, getting these runs up, and and winning a qualifier. Or in, in her case, she only ran third in a qualifier, um, which got her in the final. And uh, yeah, no, it's a it's a it's a great thrill. Yeah, and I guess getting into a race like this with a nice weight, a good gait, it's all big big helps, aren't they? Yeah, look, I, we had the two horses in it, and uh, Jack Be Lucky, I, I always rate her as a better chance than her, and then he drew 23. Uh, so that was always going to be pretty tough for him. He's also raced super. Um, I said to Kyle before the race, I said, she's not the worst chance, mate. Um, she's, she's, she, she, I know she's a, a bit of a roughie on paper, but um, they're going to go crazy mad in front, and she'll just sit back, she'll stalk them, and she's got a super finish. Yeah, absolutely. Great job. Enjoy the win. Thanks so much, Bernie. Alright, All right, let's have a quick chat to our winning jockey now and uh, nice to win any race but the country stampede Kyle these horses travel the state qualifying and Corey was just telling me this girl actually only ran third in her qualifier yeah big thrill obviously these country trainers they target this sort of race every year and uh, to get the job done for them is fantastic obviously enjoyed a nice run in transit yeah I, I was mindful I was going to get back but I wasn't worried the, the speed in these races is generally very genuine and it was today and uh, we got the splits and my filly was fantastic. Tell me how this track feels underfoot today. Well, that's my first ride and it's a winner, so it's, <laughs> we always love the track when, it's, when we're winning on it. But it's, uh, considering the rain we've had, it's, it's come through great and it's only going to improve throughout the day. Well done. Thank you. The player moving in for KWT and the light turned on. Pierrada Plate, 1200. All in. Light blinking away. Racing away well out wide was Town Crier booting up as Bo Tontos. Defiant Spirit is right up there as well, followed by Spirit of Mac. Next, the outside is Deep Respect and further back to Risk Investment, the rail. A length and a half to Acres away. Three wide as Adriel Machani Renegades on the fence. And last of all is the player in front, Bo Tontos. Second, Town Crier. Two lengths away. Third, Defiant Spirit. Fourth, the outside, Spirit of Mac. They're clear from Risky Investment on the inside of Deep Respect. Further back to Machani Renegade. Adriel, three wide around Acres away away and the players a length and a half away so Bo Tontos in front by a length and second town crier a length and a half away third defiant spirit on the inside of spirit of Mac easing out three and four wide Maloney's away from the fence on defiant spirit further back to deep respect and next the inside is risky investment at the 300 metres marker Bo Tontos town crier running home well defiant spirit down the outside is spirit of Mac and further back in the run to deep respect Bo Tontos just in front but knuckling down defiant spirit Spirit and Spirit of Mac on the outside. Bo Tonte, Spirit of Mac. Bo Tonte's in front. Bo 
Salute Tontes has won. From Spirit of Mac and Defiant Spirit, followed by Deep Respect Town Crier, Mashani Renegade, Acres Away, the player, Adriel was wide, and Risky Investments pulled up at the tail. All right, what an outstanding win that was by Bo Tontes. Michael Rod in the saddle. We're going to talk to winning trainer Rob Heathcote now. Rob, congratulations on the win. Where does this family and you start? Oh, wow. It goes way back to when I first started training back in 97, 98 with Ken Tontes. And look, special thanks to Steve Morley, Glen Logan Park. I mean, Steve's just been a you know, tower of strength for man. He does all the breeding and he's just matched them all up over the years and a lot of the success is due to Steve, so well done, mate. But what about, uh, I had him in a maiden at Ipswich on Wednesday, <laughs> heavy 10, so I said, I'll come here and drop him back to 1,200 and he's got the job done. Well, Michael Rod, you know, how good is it to have him back? It's fabulous to have him back and to see him riding Metropolitan winners is just extraordinary, so great placement. Yeah, look, at the end of the day, I've had a bit of luck and I, I said to the guys with me, I said, if we can run in the top five, I will be delighted. But to have won the race, it's, uh, it sets up a good day. 92,000. That'll help. Now, let's have a look. Are you in this one, Rob? Are you... Mrs Heathcote, she's in there. She's uh, getting ready to come to the races. She said, I won't come for race four. I'll see you later. Yeah, beautiful. And how's Rothfire? He's well. Um, big task, 61 kilos. It's going to be hard, but really happy to have Ben Thompson on. He's, you did a wonderful interview with him on Wednesday, and I just said to him, I said, what? Doesn't he speak well? Yeah. Uh, he's, he's a real gentleman. And Oh, well, we'll be there for a long way. All right, best of luck. Well done, Rob. Thanks, Ben. All right, we'll have a chat now with winning jockey Michael Rod. It's so fabulous to have him back and in the winner's stall. They're all sh as shocked as each other here, to be honest. But absolutely gifted the lead, and, and Michael just kept him going all the way. Well done. Thanks, Bern. Yeah, he's, um, he's really fit. He's a real trier. The ground doesn't bother him. And I just thought our best opportunity to beat these horses was having to be in front. You know, if I was back with them in the ruck, they were just going to be too classy. And... I was able to get out and get quite a comfortable lead. He just wanted to still do a few things wrong. He wanted to over race a little bit, but just before we straightened up, that's where I won the race. He, um, I was able to give him a good squeeze and try and just put a couple of lengths on him. And they all ran up to him, but they just couldn't close that margin. He was strong all the way, so it's a good race to break his maiden in. Yeah, super race, 92,000 jumps in the bag, and it was pretty to watch M Rod at work. Well done. Thank you, Bernie. <laughs> to Scott Power for the second time today. Here's the Country Cups Challenge. Line's good. Racing. Jumped in a pretty good line. The driller began well with Vigorous Flow, who's going forward in the early part. Up by Concord's up into a good spot. Centaur crossing over. Also Office Jim Menindi. They're followed by Burden. Such a wit getting back fire King now on the inside. Vanasta's caught out wide on the track. It's three and four deep around Ancient Echoes. They're followed by Love on Sunday, who's well back with Vivenzo and Stampede Warrior. It's back last of all on settling down. Now they go to the back of the track and they go past the 1100 metre mark and get into the lead now is Centaur. It's a length in front. Vigorous Flow is second. They're followed by Echo Point last year's winner up to third. Uh, back the fourth is uh, Office Jim, two lengths back to Menindi, then up by Concord. Such a wit is well back in the field. They're followed by Fire King, Ancient Echoes is out three and four wide. They're followed by the Driller who got back with Love on Sunday. Vanasta is well back in the field. They're followed by Burden who's on the outside of Stampede Warrior and Vivenzo was last of all, about ten lengths first to last. They travel to the side now and they go past the 700 at Centaur, three quarters of a length in front. Vigorous Flow was second, third Office Jim. They're followed by Echo Point, up by Concord's on the inside of 
by Menindi. The favourite Fire Kings tracking up in behind them and they're followed by well back in the field on the inside was Love on Sunday with Sacha with the outside from the Driller who's well back in the field and they're followed by Vivenzo to the extreme outside. They straighten up in the Country Cups final for 2023. Office Jim Rand of the league got the Centaur. Here's up by Concord into the clear with Fire King. They come down inside the 200. It's Office Jim out by two lengths. Fire King the outside's running on strongly. Office Jim in front. Fire King the outside going home a bit the better. Fire King won the Country Cups final. Beat Office Jim third up by Concord. Vivenzo close up behind him was Love on Sunday. Then came such a win in the Driller. Stampede Warrior. Centaur was back along the inside from Menindi who was well back with Echo Point then Vanasta. Burden well back with Vigorous Flow. Ancient Echoes last of all. All right, Fire King takes out the Country Cups final. Olivia trained, by, of course, by Olivia Cairns. And, Olivia, this is your stage, it would seem, your third country race in the city. Yes, it is. Um, we've had a lot of success with them. It's great. Like yeah. Yeah, so well, how long out did you start planning with this fellow? Um, at the beginning of the year, uh, we did a lot of miles early to sort of get the country runs under his belt because he only had one when we first moved down here. Um, we had to have a couple of goes at qualifiers. He ran second in the first one. Um, but, you know, you do the miles, it pays off. It certainly does. You've got a lovely ride from a good gate today. It's vital from this start, isn't it, to have a good gate? Yeah, it is vital, but I was a little worried because there was sort of so much speed on the outside and, and he drew in and we had to sort of punch forward, hold his position, but he got a beautiful run. Adam rode him great and got the, got the chocolates. <laughs> it actually turned out... Um, more gentlemanly run than I thought it was going to into that first turn. Yeah, no, it did. Um, everything just sort of panned out beautiful. I was a little worried when he straightened and he, he went to angle out and then he angled in. I'm thinking, where are you going? <laughs> but um, no, he, he put his head in front where it mattered. Well done, Olivia. Thank you. All right, let's have a chat now with Adam. Adam, you afforded a good gait and you had a nice run throughout. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the horse has been going good this prep. Um, obviously, he's got a good record for how how young he is to a lot of these horses and today a nice alley put I was able to hold a spot um, and then yeah put the put the race to bed pretty quickly yeah, nice once he got out he showed good determination didn't he yeah he's got a pretty good turn of foot so uh, as you saw that at Toowoomba last or a couple of weeks ago and, and that was with a big weight so today he dropped back in in weight and a good gait so uh, yeah it was a big asset been a while since we've seen you down this way? Yeah, I, I get around, but yeah, it's good to get a winner like this, especially for Olivia. She's, she's looked after me for a long time, so yeah, it's good. Yeah, great to have you back. Well done. Thank you. And then to Jackie. And let's get upstairs to Josh. Smile. Gate one, the favour quitted. Yep. And we're right now racing. Acquitted the inside began well. Likewise to Jarky. Right up there, couldn't refuse. Love tap the rail. Going forward is without revenge. And further back, Jetty out four wide looping forward. Mississippi Prince even deeper going right up there as well. So taking stock to Jarky the inside. Jetty working for Mississippi Prince. Fourth the outside is without revenge. And then we've got acquitted the rail, followed by June 45 out three wide working forward ahead of couldn't refuse and love tap. One further back to Ocean Treaty, followed by Whiskey Whiskey. Him a military gambler. So a little bit fired up in front here. Mississippi Prince led by length and a quarter. Second jetty. Third the inside to Jarky. No luck for June 45. Out three wide around without revenge and acquitted on the rail. Further back to couldn't refuse. Outside love tap. And then we've got Ocean Treaty, Whiskey Wisdom and Military Gambler. About seven to eight lengths. Top end of tail. And Mississippi Prince in front. Second jetty. A length and a half away. Third to Jarky. Further back to without revenge. Now going forward three wide. June 
in 45 is being wide, being passed by acquitted. Ormond's away from the rail, further back to Love Tap. And then we've got Couldn't Refuse, Military Gamblers out very, very wide. Next here is Ocean Treaty and Whiskey Wisdom at the 350. Jetty on the outside taking over. Uh, the inside Mississippi Prince is acquitted down the outside, running home well. Without Revenge comes home also, further back to Love Tap, but acquitted out wide, taking over. Without Revenge can't go with acquitted. Acquitted's in front with 100 metres left to go. Peach of a ride here. And acquitted punched out as two. Good one up by length and a half two. Without revenge, love tap jetty to Jarky. Gen 45, no luck. Whiskey wisdom, couldn't refuse. Military gambler, Mississippi Prince Ocean Treaty. All right, acquitted takes out the tail stakes. Beautifully placed. Love the cut in the ground here today. Let's have a chat with Mel Eggleston on behalf of Chris Lees. And he was the star of the yard, wasn't he? Yeah, he's... Uh... He looked a treat. He was relaxed. He was enjoying it. And um, now he's just uh, two for two up here. And um, oh, he's a nice horse and put the riding on the wall his first up run. So no, he's, we'll probably keep him up here and um, yeah. give him a couple of weeks to run him in the lock knee. Yeah, perfect. I mean, we go back to last prep. He was probably unlucky not to win the winter stakes. The stable mate won it. You called it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You put him back in the pocket. Mm, that's right. Yeah. yeah. When I look at him, I always think he looks like an entire, but of course he's not. He does, but he's just got this lovely, like, disposition. He's yeah. just good horses, you know. They're like that, aren't they, most of them? Very, very handsome. And, gosh, you've got a great ride. What, the best? That's probably why he's the leading rider at the moment, isn't it? No, it was a gun ride. It was a gun ride, and uh, he just got him off. The... Yeah, it was just a perfect. You couldn't 10 it's out of 10. just smooth, wasn't it? Wish they were all that easy. <laughs> <laughs> you do indeed. Good on you, Mel. Let's have a chat now with jockey Jim Orman. He's getting a standing ovation here. And why wouldn't you after a ride like that, Jim? I just don't know about that. I just followed the rail. <laughs> and um, yeah, I was able to pop off at the right time. And he's a good horse. This I went through its replays. It can go up, no doubt about that. Indeed. I was just saying to Mel, lucky not to win the winner stakes down there last preparation. He's staying here. He's going to run in the Loch Ney next. Yeah, it'd be hard to beat again, for sure. He's a, he's a nice horse. I think what, what got most people excited about the ride was the way you just manoeuvred off the fence. Yeah, you can do that when you've got one travelling underneath you, can't you? But, um, yeah, like I said, the horse took me where I had to go, so it was good. Great stuff. Well done. Thanks, Benny. And the light now turned on. All the rage are bounding. All in for the mode. 1200, light blinking away. All in, racing. And abounding away okay. Tiger Shark away brilliantly. Mashani Royale is going forward. Third is Minto's Dioro. Handy there is Party for two likewise. And Town is out three and four wide. It certainly can. Abounding is seventh the inside. Followed there by She's a Rogue. Mick Spice Keyboard. West of Dolby. Insta Good. Grey Zeus. Rabahi second last. Certainly can. A length and a half away. Working here. Mashani Royale just in front. Second Tiger Shark. And third three wide. As Tao Mina uh, around party for two, sneaking up the inside as Mintone is to your right, uh, bounding going forward about probably three or four lengths off the leader. Miss Kuda back near the rail, one horse away from the fence, and take off there. She's a rogue out very, very wide, and back near the inside, Mick Spice up the 350. In front, Tiger Shark, second Mintone is to your right, uh, bounding right down the outside, making ground, but still five off the leader. Mick Spice and weaving through is west of Dolby. Tiger Shark in front, west of Dolby. Dolby closing in, abounding down the outside. West of Dolby abounding out wide, but West of Dolby grabbing the lead. And West of Dolby, West of Dolby's won from abounding mixed by Tiger Shark. Followed for the back of the run then by Grazer to certainly can. Rabahi, Mentos, Dioro, Party for two. Uh, Miss Kuda, keyboard, didn't do good. She's a road, Mashani Royale and Taumina at the rear. With West of Dolby uh, in the mode stakes for the three-year-old Phillies. Great job, Ben. Yeah, no, it was, um, it was massive, you know, she missed the kick and um, probably can't repeat on air what I said um, after the start, but uh, she was great, um, you know, she really attacked the line and showed a turn of foot today and it was a nice race for her to win. 
When, when did you plan to come for this race? Because she only raced a week ago. Yeah, it wasn't, uh, wasn't the original plan, but um, after speaking to Brock, after the way she sort of pulled up, um, you know, you're always looking for a little bit of black type, and we thought she's a really nice progressive horse, only lightly raced, and uh, she's got a bright future ahead of her, and uh, we just thought we'd bring her up and just have a little crack before she went to the paddock. We're dying to know where the Queensland influenced name comes from. Uh, the Mayor's Chinchilla. So there we go, west of Dalby, yeah. West of Dalby. Well, beautifully named. So off to the paddock now. Yeah, look, we'll see how she gets home. Um, I think the gold edition's in a couple of weeks. Uh, we may sort of reassess after this, but um, more than likely we'll, um, we'll head home and have a, have a little rest. But uh, I'd just like to say congratulations to the owners. Um, it's their first Metropolitan winner and first stakes winner. So, uh, yeah, congratulations to them. Yeah, great effort. Great to have you here in town. Long time no see. Yeah, no, it's always good to be back. <laughs> All right, there is Ben Smith. We'll have a chat now with Brock Ryan and get his thoughts. But uh, obviously there was tons of speed and we delivered Queensland style for your tempo, didn't we? Yeah, it was um, really sort of uh, not that happy when she jumped quicker than the gates opened and she hit the front and then popped up. So ended up in a very awkward spot. But like you said, Queensland speed's always good and... <laughs> I got the nice sucker run up the fence and, gee, she delivered well. Yeah, she certainly did. I mean, when you were poking your head up, looking up to the front end, there were four abreast, she would have made you pretty happy. Yeah, that's right. You know, it gave me a bit more confidence from the position I was in. Just needed a bit of luck on the corner, which we, we got eventually, and she um, showed that really lovely turn of foot she has. Obviously really well educated, nicely travelled as well. Yeah, I do most of the education, so, you know, I'll, I'll take credit for that one. No, I'm just joking. No, no but um, ben, Ben's obviously done a very good job with her, this preparation. She stepped up when he's asked her to, and, um, yeah, well done to him and his team. Could be something extra for you, do you think? Maybe something on the side. Good on you, bro. Thank you. And we're right to run. Light blinking away. Here we go. Racing. Dawdling out was Vinco, the big goodbye. Rothfire and Natuno all began well. Zer Styles up into fourth out four wide. Ahead of Legal Esprit, Snow Zone clear from deep. Poor on the inside of Alpine Edge. A length and a half to Baller and three lengths to Vinco. So Rothfire, Zer Style three wide. The big goodbye between them. Camped on them as Natuno, followed by Legal Esprit. Snow Zone's on the outside. Further back to deep. Poor Alpine Edge. A length and a half to Baller and two and a half to Vinco. So Zer Style's in front now by length and a quarter. Second is the big goodbye. Third, Rothfire inside the 600 metres marker. Further back to Natuno. Legal Esprit, Snow Zone, Baller, Depor, Alpine Edge out three wide. Vinco's three lengths away. Zer style up the 350. In front by length and a quarter. Second, Rothfire back to third. The big goodbye under pressure. Running home the inside. Legal Esprit down the outside. Natuno further back to Baller. Zer style's in front but looming up as Rothfire on the outside. Natuno's about three lengths away. Zerstyle in front still. Rothfire trying hard. Zerstyle lifting. Rothfire but Zerstyle's in front. Zerstyle's one from Rothfire. Photo third. Legal Esprit. Baller. Netuldo. D. Poor Snow Zone. Followed by the big goodbye. Alpine Edge and Vinco pulling up at the rear. All right. What a brilliant running of the George Moore Stakes here. This horse is ridiculously great here at Doombin. Tony Gollan joins us for a chat now. Great training effort, Tony. You had numerous runners in here, but how much does this guy love Doombin? Yeah, oh, he loves it here. I said to the guys that own him, and they were really disappointed when we drew wide, but I said to them, like, we, we come over here and worked here on Tuesday, and this is really his favourite track. He, he gets himself into such a good rhythm here, and it's the only race all summer that I had an opportunity to bring him back here to Doombin to race at. And, I was so thrilled they allowed me to run him even off the wide draw and Ryan had to take his time to get across but he judged the tempo beautifully and I really thought the horse, obviously the, this horse Rothfire with the big weight, he loomed up to him but he had a kick left in the locker and he's got such an amazing doom and record. Yeah. The other horse is Natuno? Uh, geez, he's a bit dis disappointing today I thought, he was just out of his comfort zone further from home than what I expected. 
So I need to have a chat to Damien and see how things are there in the next few days. I thought Baller was huge first up for ever and, you know, on, on a tempo and race that wasn't going to suit him, I thought he was the run of the race outside the winner. Good on your tone. Thanks, Bernie. All right, Ryan Maloney's here now. Always nice to win a stakes race, but this guy's just super, isn't he? Yeah, uh, 100%. Uh, Bernie, he, um, his run was full of merit the other day. He had no luck whatsoever. And he's t- he, he's sus- 1,200's always been a suspect, but today he... he just gathered himself and he was just in a good rhythm and he wasn't overexerting himself, which he usually can do, but uh, six kilos makes a big difference in a, in a tight finish, but um, look, he's as brave as ever and uh, it was good to see him uh, get re- reverse the form from the other day. Just in the zone, as they say, he just glided along from the half mile to the turn. He did, yeah, and like I said, he's, he can use that big stride, but he can be one to overdo it within himself, where today he was really good within himself and he gave himself every chance to run out the full 500. You'd have been calling that winning pose with wrath fire breathing down your neck? Yeah, 100%. Like I said, six kilos makes a big difference, and, but, but to his credit, when he felt rough fire, he, he, he dug again, so uh, his, his win was full of merit and bravery. Good on you, Ryan. Thank you. So the field just about right, commencing at the 300 metre marker on the home straight. And the light now turned on. 2,000 on the trip. And they're all in, and the gates open, they're racing. Away well, Red Wave and Flying Joy. Quality time is rolling forward. Southern Stock is handy. And coming over from out wide is Tavis Town. And Head of State is right up there as well. Set Me Up has gone back. And Great House is back third last. So Tavis Town out wide's in front. Second Head of State. Third, the inside is Quality Time. Not much room. Three wide sneak preview. Savvy Legends on heels out three deep as well there. Red Wave on the inside of Flying Joy. Night Choice on the rail. Southern Stock's outside. Tapple Doodle Doo further back to Great House outside Tappy's Lad. Set me up to length and a half away. So Tavis Town's in front. Second, Key and Sneak Preview. Third is Quality Time and fourth, the outside there. Going forward, just over on the outside is Head of State and three wide is Savvy Legend. Red Wave on the rail, followed by Flying Joy. A length and a half night choice on the inside of Southern Stock and they're clear from Great House outside Tapple Doodle Doo. Clear from Tappy's Lad and set me up a length and a half away at the 1,000 metres marker. Tavis Town's in front by length and a quarter. Second sneak preview. Third quality time. Three wide savvy legend around Head of State. Flying Joys outside Red Wave and further back to Night Choice on the rails. Southern Stock the outside and further back to Tapple Doodle Doo. Great House in third last. A length and a half to tap his ladder and set me up as to last of all. So Tavis Town down the sides in front. Second quality time. Getting away from the rail as they approach the home turn. And they've got about 500 metres left to run. Third Sneak preview, three wide. Savvy Legends been deep. Red Wave on the rail. Night Choice away from the fence and making ground. One from the outside. Flying Joy and sneaking runs as Tapple Doodle Doo. Quality time looming up on the outside of Tavis Town at the 250. Sneak preview runs home. Night Choice down the outside. Red Wave further back, but quality time skipped away. Two lengths in front. Night Choice runs home. Red Wave between them with 100 metres left to go. Here's Night Choice lengthening on the outside, grabbing the lead. Ladies back. Night Choice is one second quality time third red wave followed by tapple doodle do and then sneak preview flying joy tavis town great house tappy's lad southern stock savvy legend set me up and have stayed at the rear big john come and have a chat to us now that was absolutely fantastic he deserves some luck today yeah he did you know he's had none you know in sydney's first start was 1200 he was never going to probably be competitive but um I, I thought he went well so i was quite happy and then uh when we went to the mile race, he got turned inside out. He was probably lucky. He, he, he still, we, we were able to continue on in the campaign. He got twisted sideways badly. And um, and then in the big race, you needed to be in on the fence and Legado ran him off. So he, he's had excuses and all those runs, but you, you, you start doubting uh, even your own judgment. 
oh, don't do that. You, you guys are the masters. And, you know, he's always promised to be to develop into a nice day. Obviously, today was the test, wasn't he? It was a mile to 2,000. Yeah, that's right. You know, and like in his, in his run it right out too, you know, it was pleasing to see him do that. So, um, you know, who, who you know, you know we, we, I, I'm not quite sure how far he'll go, but we were pretty confident he'd run the 2,000. Hence, that's why we, we wanted to try him today rather than going to the 1,600, although I probably would have been quite happy to go to the mile with him because we know he's, he's proven at the journey and probably a little bit unlucky the other day at the sunny coast. Can you start to eye off some big prize money and perhaps Magic Millions Carnival? Is he a Millions horse or are you looking for one of those wild cards? Well, he's, he's a Magic Millions horse, so he, 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 he'll qualify for whatever we want him to go into. So, um, you know, maybe the 1800 wave on the first day might be a nice race for him for three and four year olds. All right, well, it was an easy watch today. Enjoy the win. Thanks, thanks, Bernie. All right, let's have a chat now with winning jockey Jaden Lloyd. And Jaden, you made that watch so easy for us. Put him to sleep, midfield the fence, found the back of Red Wave from the seven or eight hundred. It was just pretty to watch. Yeah, um, got a lovely sort of run behind the one I thought was the one to beat, and um, sort of took me everywhere. And um, he, it's great to get a win on him because he's been very unlucky this prep. He, obviously, he's been contesting the big races, but. Um, sort of back to this grade, we thought it'd be awfully hard to beat today. So 2000 today, his first go ran it out really strongly. Could he run further? Um, I'd be question mark, and I think 2000 probably is, is as far as he can go. But um, terrific win. He might be looking for the paddock now. But well done. Thank you. Um, then Madrova, and I've got 14 in the mix, too hard to refuse. All right, yes. I'm with Starzam. Here's Josh. Mel and Billy Johnson. Light on, runners right 10 Brisbane. Over 1350. And they're all in, they're racing, and the face out wide began well. Likewise, El Burke and also the Drover. Manhood is booting up the inside. Kipling's journey handy, but trapped out. Also, Coco Brew Express. Badil Romance and Too Hard to Refuse. El Burke had now drifted back. Stars M's on the inside. Light of Boom, followed by Driver Deal. And they're clear from Aussie Nugget on the inside of Chase and Artie. So the face is working three wide in front, though. Second, Manhood. Third, the Drover. Going forward is Kipling's journey three deep, followed by Coco Brew Express. Next, the outside, Badil Romance and Too Hard to Refuse on the rail. One further back to Well Burke and then we've got Stars M on the inside of Light of Boom, Driver Deal. A length and a half, Chase and Artie and Aussie Nugget at the 5.50. The face in front by three parts, second the Drover, Manhood third, the inside, no luck for Kipling's Journey out three and four wide. Coco Brew Express, Badil Romance, Too Hard to Refuse on the rails and Stars M back behind those, but the face up the 300, kicked away, three lengths in front, second Manhood, third the Drover, further back to Coco, Brew Express and Driver Deal is making some ground but the face at the 150, well clear it's five lengths in front, Driver Deal is running home well, down the outside is Light of Boom, Stars and but it's all the face and he wins again the face. Second driver deal, thirds a photo, Stars M, a light of boom, followed by Aussie Nugget, Chase Nutty, good first up. The driver, Badil Romance, Elber, Kipling's Journey, followed by Coco Brew Express, a long way back in the field there. Uh, too hard to refuse, and last of all was Manhood. With this horse to face, and haven't you turned him around? Oh, it's amazing. Look at his strapper there in tears. She's been looking after him. and Must be her favourite. Uh, very much so. He's ahead of me. <laughs> How beautiful. Uh, yeah, no, look, that was amazing. Uh, I was confident on the corner. They were all off the bit. Um, and obviously 13.50 was a risk, but there was nothing else. It was the only plate race coming up, and we thought luck favours the brave. We'll give him a go. And, um, yeah, he wanted to win, and he did it uh, in great fashion. That space he put on them from the 300 was just so exciting to watch. Oh, it was. And I don't think he gave him much of a rest mid-race. He sort of just kept him in a nice rhythm. And, um, yeah, that's, you know, it was amazing. Obviously, 
you know, with a name like The Face, he is magnificent to look at. Oh, he's stunning, and he knows it too. He's so full of character, and oh, he is really, you know, he'll kick you or bite you or anything. He just, he runs the show. I love it. What summer sort of plans have you got for him? Well, the, the plans were to just try and win a few of these plate races because he gets in so well. He's got the high benchmark and limited number of wins. And, um, yeah, it's working, so we'll probably look for another plate. Indeed, we all look forward to it. Well done on a fabulous job. Thank you. Wow, that got us all excited. Oh, me too. He's, um, he's a lovely horse. Bernie, he come to Queensland with great form. Um, he won great here second up. Beat him more over Loche, who was dominant her next start. There was really good form through the race. Last start, he's held off Freedom Rally. Um, Aaron third Nashira. Like, he beat a good group of horses in his backyard. Up to the 13.50, same grade. He went up three and a half kilos, but, um, gee, he was dominant. David says he's got an amazing personality. Can you feel that through riding him? Yeah, he's... he's really, he just loves his job. I said to Vander, um, who's strapping him, that, uh, that he's just really he's a happy horse. Um, no doubt he's a, he's a favourite. Vander was quite emotional. Um, obviously, the, the entire team has myself very proud of him. So he's a nice horse, and I'm sure we're, we've yet to reach the ceiling with him. I have a photo. Thank you. Oh.